Isaiah 55. Uh, and this is just practical stuff. Um, we'll just cover one simple subject, and that is a basic of being a Christian that the world doesn't know anything about is seeking God. I mean, if we boil it all the way down to its most common denominator, it's you seek God. You're concerned about what he wants, what he thinks, how he feels. You're seeking for him. The world is seeking self-gratification and self-pleasure. Here's a song I heard um, at uh, Five Guys the other day, or I think it was last week, but I looked it up because the words were so... I guess people don't pay attention to what they're hearing. It's, it's so hopeless. That's what the world is left with. Here's the, it's called Here I Go Again. It's by White Snake. That doesn't sound very good either. A white snake? <laughs> they're trying, trying to make the snake sound good, white? Here's the lyrics. I don't know where I'm going, but I sure know where I've been. Okay, what good is that going to do anybody? Um, hanging on the promises in songs of yesterday. Okay, well, obviously it's not done him any good so far. And I've made up my mind, I ain't wasting no more time, but here I go again. He already told us he doesn't know where he's going, but he's going there again. He's determined about it. Um, Though I keep searching for an answer, I never seem to find what I'm looking for. That is the world. They're searching and they're seeking and they don't know what it's for. Oh Lord, I pray you give me strength to carry on because I know what it means to walk along the lonely street of dreams. Here I go again on my own, going down the only road I've ever known. Like a hobo, I was born to walk alone and I've made up my mind I ain't wasting no more time. Okay, he's... So he's not going to waste any more time. He doesn't know where he's going, but he's going to go there faster. <laughs> That's the world. That's not what a Christian has. A Christian knows exactly where they're going. The devil's ploy is this. Don't worry about where you're going. You're going to be having fun. So just get on the road, and I'll give you plenty of trinkets so you don't have to think about where does this road lead. God's the other way around. He says the destination is what we're going for. I'll tell you, in my Father's house are many mansions. That's where you're going. I'm going to prepare a place for you. So in the meantime, you get yourself ready for what I've got getting ready for you. Here we are in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6. He says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. That is a command. It's a command for a Christian. Seek ye the Lord. And then there's a warning in it, while he may be found. He doesn't give everyone just an open call, come anytime you want to, you know, whenever you get ready, I'm here, just let me know. He says, while he may be found. He gives a man a deadline. Once the deadline's up, time's over. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. He says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. So that's a great promise. If you'll seek for him, he can be found. Most people aren't seeking. Or they seek very limitedly. Um, they, they seek for two or three minutes and say, uh, This is too hard. Give me the... Bible for the dummies or something. You know, they've got all those book for dummies. <laughs> it's supposed to boil everything down and make it real simple. This is as simple as it gets. 66 books. The Bible is a book for dummies. <laughs> uh, okay, this seeking includes seeking his name. It'll be in Psalms 83, verse 16. Psalms 83, 16. When a person does not on their own seek God, he does some things to instigate them to seek for him. Here's one of them. Psalms 83, 16, he says, Fill their faces with shame. What? Where's all the love, man? He says, 
fill their faces with shame that there's a reason for it that they may seek thy name O Lord when worse comes to worse there's one place you can turn and you instinctively know it the curse words are all about deity they're not about Muhammad they're not about humanity they're about God you will seek God when worse comes to worse he's saying here if they won't seek your name on their own do it this way give them shame shame will make you seek God that's one way but you can do it on your own other way is his word in Isaiah 34 16 the word of God helps you it's the only way you can seek God truly you can have a desire and that can be internal and that can be mystical however if you get serious about it you've got to go to the one book that tells you about it how you can find him his word Isaiah 34 16 seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read no one of these shall fail none shall want or mate for my uh, mouth it hath commanded it and his spirit it hath garnered them okay so seeking includes looking in the book and that's part of it he intends you to seek him through his word that's the way you do it seek yep seek out of the book uh, it also includes seeking his face we don't think about that very often God gives us the characteristics that we know so that we can understand him in Psalms 27 verse 8 Psalms 27 verse 8 it says when thou saidest seek ye my face my heart said unto thee thy face O Lord will I seek you don't think about that God has a face you need to be seeking for we found that in Deuteronomy um, or was it numbers numbers in numbers uh, he says make his face to shine upon thee okay his face is his countenance it's um, a face is the thing that we use to read another person we look at their face what's the feedback I'm getting you know are they mad are they happy are they bored are they confused those faces tell us something so does God's you need to seek his face it'll tell you whether or not he's happy with you whether or not you're doing something that's upsetting him or if he's happy with you you'll it'll encourage you but if you're not looking for it he might be happy with you but you're not looking at it so you're not taking the encouragement that's there he says in Psalms 105 verse 4 Psalms 105 verse 4 he says seek the Lord okay we've been seeing that over and over now he's going to tell us a little more about that and his strength seek ye his face evermore so when you're seeking his face you get strength from that we get strength for this life from his face well if he's shining graciously on us and giving us strength then you'd want to seek that there's a there's some good things about doing it um, it also includes seeking his strength in first Chronicles 16 11 first Chronicles 16 11 it doesn't take long of living life before you realize you're not prepared for it you, you find out everything you need um, just a little too late <laughs> and one of the things you need is strength first Chronicles 16 11 he says seek the Lord and his strength seek his face continually so it's not a one and done it's something that continues to be a pursuit and that should be a common denominator of a Christian they have a continual pursuit after God it's not just a fad that they've that they're trying um, I hear people talk about try Jesus no don't try Jesus commit commit seek it continually in Psalms um, 
Oh, we covered that one already. It also includes seeking his commandments. Now, that's a tough one. We don't like commandments, but we're supposed to look for his commandments because um, it's not about us. <laughs> we like things that are about us, and then we make the commandments. But we realize that it's not us making the rules. We serve someone. So if we're going to serve them well, we need to know what they like and what they don't, what they demand. First Chronicles 28, verse 8. God does something interesting with the Bible. He could have made one book of just the commands, but he doesn't do that. They're sprinkled all throughout there, and you've got to find them. Same with his, the, his blessings, the promises. They're sprinkled all throughout there. He didn't just put them all in one chapter or one book. He could have, but he intends us to do some work for them. First Chronicles 28, verse 8. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord... And in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God. That's a commandment. That you may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance to your children after you forever. Your, God intends us to be working. That's why he didn't put everything right up front. Some things are sprinkled throughout, and if you're not looking for them, you won't find them. In Malachi chapter 2, verse 7. Malachi 2, verse 7. This will be a Bible drill practice tonight because we're going to cover a lot of verses. I took it easy on you this morning. This morning we had a expository message. What that means is I take one chapter and I expound what's in it. So we didn't really leave the chapter very often. But tonight I'm doing a topical. That is, I'm taking a topic and showing you everything the Bible says about it. So we'll be all over. Malachi 2, verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Okay, we should be looking and seeking the laws and the commandments of God. They're in there. We need to know them. You realize there's a whole chapter in uh, Leviticus on what to do if you broke a rule, a commandment, and didn't know it. You didn't know you broke one. Okay, well, they should have known it. But if you didn't know it, there's something you can do about it. Here he's saying, get to know them. Find them before it's too late. Find it before you break it. His precepts, that's another thing that we should be seeking. In Psalms 119, verse 45. Psalms, 140, uh, Psalms 119, verse 45. It says, And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. Okay, there is a freedom in knowing what God says. There's a liberty to that. The world doesn't know that liberty. The world is walking around in um, confusion. They're walking around timidly, not knowing if they've overstepped a bound or not. They walk around trying things. Okay, if I do this, how far can I push this? How far can I go with this? That's not what a Christian should do. A Christian should know the bounds. Once you know the fence is there, you're at liberty to play freely because you know the fence is there. There's no cars coming through the fence. But if there's no fence up and occasionally a car comes flying through, you've got to walk very lightly. You can't just play at liberty. But if you know the precepts, you can. In verse 94, in verse 94 of Psalms 119, he says, I am thine, save me, for I have sought thy precepts. There's a certain salvation. Now, I'm not talking about your eternal salvation. This is a temporal salvation from situations. There's a salvation from situations that is guaranteed to someone who is seeking the precepts of God. 
because you won't get involved in certain things that would have harmed you. They have a big craze right now for tattoos. Everybody's getting a tattoo. All the Christians are jumping in on board with it. Okay, that's a big crave. Well, it won't be long before it's already come out at certain levels, but it won't be long before they start finding all the diseases connected with that. You know what was a big thing a while back, um, probably before, right before my teenage years, but it was, uh, um, what do they call it, TB? Or not, not TB, um, hepatitis. Hepatitis, and a lot of the way they got that was from tattoos, from needles. Okay, all that stuff's going to come out. But you know what? You could have avoided that. Follow the precepts. The precepts keep you safe from situations you didn't have to be in. We should also be seeking his kingdom. We should. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, 33, he says... But, yeah, everybody knows this verse, I believe. He says, but seek ye first. Okay, if we're going to seek first, then that means the number one priority we have in life is seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Now, he didn't say there the kingdom of heaven because that would be earth. He didn't say, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. That's millennium. It wouldn't have done anybody in the Old Testament good to seek the millennium. They're not going to see it. (laughs) They're going to die before it ever shows up. But the kingdom of God, that's within you. That you can seek and should seek. In Luke chapter 12, 31. Basically the same verse, but when he says a thing twice... It better be um, something we pay attention to. Luke 12, 31. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. There's a blessing to doing what you're supposed to do. He didn't have to say, I'll give you anything for doing it. He could have said, this is your job, seek me, period. But he says, seek me. That's what you're supposed to do. When you do, I'm going to give you some extras. I'll give you some goodies for it. <laughs> it's like, like, like an animal. They always want a dog treat. <laughs> yeah. And these people start spoiling their animals by giving them treats for doing what they're supposed to do. And then they won't do what they're supposed to do unless you give them a treat. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, that's the way God trains us. He says, just do what you're supposed to do. And I got a treat for it. <laughs> but we don't do it. Uh, We should also seek his righteousness. Now, this is a tough one. He said in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. A lot of people want to seek his kingdom for self-gratification. They want to seek his kingdom for what's in it for me. Now, I understand there's a whole group of people that never seek it, but you'll find the mystics, the people who are into um, the, the supernatural stuff. They'll seek something spiritual, but the reason they're seeking it is for their own benefit. You know, what's in it for me? You know, how big is my mansion going to be? You know, <laughs> um, how many, the, the Muslims, how many virgins am I going to get on the other side? You know, that's what they're thinking. Right. Here he's saying we should be seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Okay, well, that counts us out. <laughs> his righteousness. We should seek Christ. That's a good thing to be seeking. God sure thinks highly of him. We should be seeking him. In Malachi 3, verse 1, he says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek, somebody seeking, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. He did come. And he's coming back. Um, We should be seeking him. Now, the way we seek him is not by looking for a man to show up. He already did. We look for him in the word. In his book, he's revealed himself. That's where you'll see him. In Luke 2, verse 15. Luke. 
Luke 2, 15, here's when it happens. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into the heavens, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. There's a lot in the Bible that you can find if you'll seek it. Had the shepherds not gone, they wouldn't have found him. It was that simple. Even though they had had a messenger from heaven say, he's in Bethlehem, go, go look and see. They could have said, oh man, that's cool. Right on, okay, how many sheep y'all got, okay? Uh, where, where are we gonna feed them tomorrow? No, if they had been busy about their everyday life and not gone to seek him, they wouldn't have seen him. Most Christians are the same way. I can get up here and tell you over and over, okay, it's right here, There's, he's right here, he's revealed himself, go seek him. You know how many do it? Not very often, not very many. You gotta open the page, you've gotta read the words in order to see him. But most people act like the shepherd who heard the angel say he's in Bethlehem and said, that's nice, I'm gonna sit here and keep watching sheep. There was something way more important than watching sheep. There is for us too. It's found in his word. Uh, we should seek um, justification through Christ because it does you no good to seek it through works. <laughs> the, whole, the whole Old Testament proves it. You, you've got to have justification through Christ because he's already completed all the works. If you're living your life by a set of rules, you'll be frustrated to no end. You'll keep breaking them. You've got to fall on the mercy of Jesus Christ who never broke a one. In Galatians 2.16. Galatians 2.16. He says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. So, quit wasting your time. <laughs> but by the faith of Jesus Christ... Even we have believed in, Christ, in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. The second you can um, follow a rule and a regulation, a law, you know what we do? We start getting proud about it. <laughs> then it did you no good. <laughs> It's a catch-22. Don't obey rules and regulations because you are um, you have that much self-will. It's that becomes will worship, a worship of yourself. Follow the rules and regulations because Christ wants you to, because Christ is leading you to do it. Then it's nothing you did. He did it. He showed it. He moved you. He helped you. In verse seventeen. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. So he's telling you, look, just because you get saved doesn't mean it's over. You've got to keep seeking the justification found in Christ. You didn't do anything by a regulation and a rule to get saved. You're not going to do anything after you're saved that's going to count for eternity for justification. It's found in Christ. He's done it all. He's completed everything. So, if we could do them, it was a waste for him to come. God knows we can't. We know we can't. History proves we can't. There's no sense in trying. You'll frustrate yourself to no end in trying to obey rules and regulations. Now, you should know the rules and the regulations. Why? Because you're seeking his face. What makes him happy? You should want to do it out of gratitude for what he's done for you. Love, Love correct. Okay, we should also seek something he's doing for us. He's in the middle of a big building project right now. He said, if I leave here, I'm making a mansion for you. When it's done, I'll be back to get you. Okay, well, if that's what he's spending his time doing, we should be seeking that. That should be on our mind. It's on his. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10. 
Hebrews 11.10. This, of course, is the faith chapter. All the people, the Old Testament saints that God's proud of, he puts in this chapter. Not all of them, but a, a good list of them. Hebrews 11.10. It says, For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. That'd be a well worth uh, your time to spend seeking for right there. And we can. Verse 16. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. That tells you something about God. If you'll seek for the thing he's doing right now in heaven for you, he says, I'll be proud of you. I'm not going to be ashamed to be called your God because you're seeking the thing I'm doing, building a mansion. For Israel, it was a city. In Hebrews 13, verse 14, Hebrews 13, 14. He says, For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Now, I know the doctrinal implication is Israel and the tribulation. They're going to be cast from, you know, kicked from one corner to the next and back and forth. And they have been their whole history. In one nation, kicked out of it, flee to another one, kicked out of that one, you know, tried to be exterminated. That's their history. And this verse is true for them. They've never had a continuing city. They've got one right now, but they can't even keep it. You know, the Muslims are trying to kick them out and say that Jerusalem doesn't belong to them. What? Where'd that come from? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly where it came from. They, But they're looking for a city. They're going to get one. It's going to come down. Now, for us, our city will come down too, New Jerusalem. We should be seeking it. He's building it for us. Here, we may not have a continuing city. The cities change names, they change boundaries, um, and it's just a matter of time before they change locations. I mean, once the military takes over and this becomes a dictator state, <laughs> they, may, they may take all the bounds away. We should seek by a couple of means, several means. One of them is prayer. Prayer is a good means to seek God. In Job chapter 8, verse 5. Job 8, verse 5. We have the ability to do something... I don't know that if I was God, I would be so gracious as to allow somebody to speak to me. You know, if I went through all the work to give them all the things I require written down and preserved it for year after year while men tried to destroy it, I might just be tempted to say, I've given you everything you need. You don't need to talk to me. Do what I've done. Do everything I've told you. Then you can talk to me when you get up here. But God's not that way. He says, you can talk to me anytime. That's one way we should seek him. Job 8, verse 5, he says, If thou wouldest seek unto God betimes, and make thy supplication to the Almighty. We have something there that we can do. The world does not have that. Talk about a genie in a bottle. This will blow that out of the water. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 3. Daniel is the revelation of the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, you get the, the uh, end time prophecies from Daniel. Now, you'll get them several places, but Daniel is a major book. If you take the, another, another interesting thing to do is take the books of the Bible, and you can lay them out this way. They mirror each other. You can take Genesis, lay it next to Matthew, Exodus, so forth and so on. When you get to the end of the New Testament, there's only 27 books in the New Testament, 39 in the Old Testament. So when you get to the end of the New Testament, you know what book it matches up to? Daniel. And they mirror each other. 
They're all talking about the tribulation millennium. Here, he's, here he is, he says, Daniel 9, 3. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. It paid off. He got the revelation. He got something good for it. He got all the information. God came down and he started connecting all the dots for him. He said, I was seeking his face. We know he was seeking it through reading the scripture. He said, I understood by books, that is by reading the book of Jeremiah and Isaiah, that the captivity was going to be 70 years. He got that information from the word of God. Some things that an angel came down and told him. Okay, he got it because he was seeking in the word of God and in prayer. Both of those have to go hand in hand. You can't ha you're, you're out of balance if you only have one. If all you do is read the Bible, but you don't talk to God, it's imbalanced. He wants to hear from you. If all you do is pray and don't read the Bible, you're a mystic. You need to hear what he says. It has to be a balance. We should, uh, we should seek him... Um, we should seek his house. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Deuteronomy 12 verse 5. Now understand the doctrinal implication of this is they're talking about the temple. They're talking about a place that God's going to put his name forever. And for us Gentiles, we don't have a spot like that. We don't have a building that God meets in. We do have a group he meets in, though. And there's something special about, there was something special about the building back there. There's something special about Christians getting together and having fellowship in God. There's something special about that. Deuteronomy 12, 5. But unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name there, even unto his habitation shall ye seek, and thither thou shalt come. Okay, he said there's going to be a special place, and that's a place for you to seek, and that's a place for you to come. So on earth, while we should be seeking the eternal things, for the temporal, on earth there's something we should be seeking too. You should be seeking fellowship with each other. That should be natural. Christians should want to be with Christians. If they don't, there's something bad wrong. Either the Christian is not right, or the world is right and Christian ain't. <laughs> so, let's fix it. In Psalms 27, verse 4. Psalms 27, verse 4. This is David. Now, David had an insight to God that we probably never will. But David had something special. He had what's called the sure mercies of David. He was called a man after God's own heart. Something special about him. Here's one of his desires. If we could go into the closet and pull out, you know, the secret journals that David had, here's what would be written. Psalms 27, 4. One thing I have desired of the Lord... That will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. He said, if I could have anything I wanted, I would just live in the temple. I'd just stay there. That's how much of a desire it was for him. Christians don't have that desire anymore. It's like, well, you know, I, I got to go to church on this Sunday morning. We got to go. It, David was dying. He couldn't wait till it was Sunday to get there. Christians don't have that same desire. Now, understand why. <laughs> Back then, there was a lot of persecution. So it drove them to be closer. Look at foreign countries now. The Spirit of God is powerful in the countries where the Christians are persecuted because they bond together. They know... The only like-minded people are like us who are <laughs> about to get our heads cut off. 
that causes them to have a, a, a more of a, a kin to each other. But we should, without having persecution, we should too. Yes. Yep. Yep. It's real. It's not a. It's not a theory. It's reality. Okay. Seeking God should be several things. It should be immediate. It should be continual. And it should be while he can be found. Those are important things. In Hosea ten twelve, he says, "Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time." There's no delay in that. That's do it now. If you wanted to know when the time to seek, when's the best time to seek God, it's the time you're breathing. It's the time you've just considered it. <laughs> That's the time to do it. No delay. Um, he says, seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Say, I've, I've sought him before and I found some of it. Well, it ain't over yet. You ain't got it all. Keep seeking. <laughs> you should seek it continually. In Psalms 105, verse 4, he says, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. There's no expiration date on it. Keep seeking it. You know what we're going to do when we get to heaven? We're going to keep seeking it. That never ends. This is simply practice. This is the warm-up ceremony <laughs> for eternity. He's, we should seek him while he can be found. This is the verse we started with. Isaiah 55, 6, he says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. That's kind of a warning. That's a scary thought. For a time, he reveals himself. He's near. And you can find him. The farther you get away from him, the longer you delay, the harder it is to find him. Now, that's not to say he can't be found. It's to say you've got to get real serious about it. The time to seek him is the youngest age you can and keep on. We should seek him with diligence, not half-heartedness. That's this age, seeks him half-hearted. Hebrews 11.6 If we had to compare Christianity... Um, if we had a group of Muslims and a group of Christians and we started questioning them, how diligently do you seek to follow what you claim is your faith? You know who wins out? The Muslim. The Muslim wins out over the Christian because Christians don't read the Bible. They don't do this simple, this simple, three verses a day. That's very basic. One verse a day. I mean, that'll put you finishing the Bible when you're 95. You know, but, but even something that simple, they don't even do. Muslims pray six times a day. You know, they got it where they stop the cabs in New York and get their little uh, prayer rags out and <laughs> nail down on them. They're more dedicated. They're more religious about a false... Uh, belief system than a Christian who has the real thing. That's sad. Hebrews eleven six he says, For without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that half heartedly seek him. No, sir. That diligently seek him. God doesn't reward laziness. We have to seek him diligently. It's work. If you want to under, he'll, he'll put verses in there that you won't understand. He'll put something in there that questions you. And you think, what in the world does that mean? I showed the guys this. I'll show you. Malachi chapter 2. Um, he'll put some things in there that will make you scratch your head so you can seek diligently. I've shown this to too many people now. I'm going to have to find the answer. <laughs> Malachi 2, verse 3. Malachi 2, 3, he says, Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feasts. This is God talking. People don't realize that's the way he talks. That's the way he talks. And one shall take you away with it. And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant may be with 
See that word? Levi. He didn't say with the tribe of Levi, which is the way most people interpret that. And yes, you can take it that way. However, there's more to it because the verse keeps going on. Saith the Lord of hosts, My covenant was with him, singular, of life and peace, and I gave it to him, singular, for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. So, here's a hunt you can do. When did Levi fear God's name? You'll have to diligently seek if you want the answer to that. That's the way God's word is set up. It's set up so he's going to put little clues in there and say, hey, go find the answer to this one. Here's a question. <laughs> it's intended that way. He wants to see who's serious about it. And by and large, it's not us. <laughs> we should seek him in the day of trouble. Now, this is an easier one to do. When you get in trouble, you should be seeking him. That's a lot of time. That's why he instigates trouble. He knows that's when we will seek him. So you got a lot of trouble in your life? Maybe it's because that's when you talk to him. <laughs> he says, oh, they haven't, talked, they haven't called me in a while. Let me stir up some mess down there. <laughs> Psalm 77, 2. Psalm 77, 2. It says, in the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. Good time to do it. Nothing wrong with doing that. You know what the devil's going to tell you? The devil's going to tell you, hey, look, you've not sought him before this. If you start seeking him now, you're a hypocrite. Well, listen to that. That's a lie. There's not a wrong time to seek God. There's not. If you can think it, if you can imagine it, do it. Seek God. That'll ensure him being found. He'll be found when you seek for him. In Deuteronomy 4, 29, he says, But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. In this chapter, he's told Israel, here's the blessings you can have if you obey the commandments. Here's the curses you'll get if you don't do them. But, he says, even if you've messed up and I've scattered you amongst the other nations, keep on seeking me. If from thence ye seek me, you'll find me. He said, you can find him. There's not a bad time. The devil will tell you all the lies in the world. He tells you, this is a big one, he tells. You can't seek him now. You need to prove to him that that you're going to seek him. So you need to live good first and then you can seek him. That doesn't even make any sense. But we feel that way sometimes. That's not right. Seek him anytime. He'll tell you this one. If you come back to him, he's going to wear you out. He's going to beat you to a pulp. Not necessarily. If you don't, you can count on it. <laughs> That's the mess you're already in. You're already getting the spanking. Turn to him. <laughs> Maybe. Uh-huh, yep, yep. They knew that they should be put to death, so they didn't turn to him. That's right. All right, let's, um, I've got way more notes here than we could ever finish. I'm going to run down to some examples. Asa is a good example. In Second Chronicles 14, verse 7. Second Chronicles 14, 7. Asa the king. He says, Therefore he said unto Judah, Let us build these cities and make about them walls and towers, gates and bars, while the land is yet before us, because we have sought the Lord our God. We have sought him, and he hath given us rest on every side. That's what happens when you seek him. He gives you rest. He blesses you have to turn to him. When you turn to him, you get something for it. You get good, the real good. So they built and prospered. Uh, Jehoshaphat in Second Chronicles 17.3. Second 
2 Chronicles 17, 3, Jehoshaphat. And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David and sought not unto Balaam. The popular thing to do was to seek Balaam, to seek things, something physical you could put your hands on. He didn't do that. He, so, he sought just like David did to God. Okay, God said that was noteworthy. In verse 4, but sought the Lord God of his fathers and walked in his commandments and not after, uh, not after the doings of Israel, the corrupt Israelites. Uh, here's another one you can write down. Uzziah in 2 Chronicles 26, 5. Hezekiah in 2 Chronicles 31, 21. Joash in 2 Chronicles 34, 3. Ezra in Ezra 7, 10. Um, and I'll give you two more. David, we'll look this one up. David in Psalms 34, 4. The Bible gives us all the formulas. He says, all you got to do is seek me. Then he gives us one story after the next of proof. When you do it, it works out right. <laughs> we think we got to reinvent the wheel every time. No, you don't. It's already there. Instruction manual has been written. David in Psalms 34, 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all, A-L-L, -L, my fears. That's the God we serve. Why wouldn't you want to seek that one? No excuse. Go for it. You really want that. You want to be delivered from any fear that would prop, uh, pop up in your life. You do. That's where you find it, in seeking God. Daniel's another good one. Daniel 9, verse 3. Daniel 9, 3. We covered this verse, but I'm going to add another one to it. Daniel 9, 3. Daniel says, I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Verse 4. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, Now, listen to a prayer warrior pray. O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. It's taken for granted you fear him. He says there, the great and dreadful but then he says there's more, to, there's more to the story than just being fearful of God. Have you fallen in love with him? You won't until you know what he says. So you seek him and you find out what he says. Then you get the ones who love him. Then when you love him, you start keeping his commandments, not out of duty, but out of desire. You want to keep them. And he says the way he responds is he keeps his covenants with mercy. We need some mercy. And you have to seek his commandments. Commandments are hard things to force the flesh to obey. But the way you do it is you get more information. The more information about how good a God it is that we serve, the more willingly you serve him out of love. If all you have are um, the trial and errors of life, it becomes a real regu re regulated Christianity. It all becomes boiled down to a formula. There's not any formulas. formulas. Formulas are good for a starter. It'll get you started. But soon the formula doesn't work. It has to be done out of love. Love is what will drive you to Christ and keep you there. Fear doesn't do it. You got to fear God because of his power. You obey him because you love him. And that's what it boils down to. All right, that's seeking God, and I'll post it. Um, I think I'll post all this because I didn't cover a third of it. There's literally 99 verses here, so I'll, I'll post it. It's, um, it's quite a lot. All right, Chris, you want to close us in prayer, and we'll call it a night.